Yes, I am. One of my parents is, well, was a British officer and will kick your ass if you don't let me go right now. Can you please stop jumping? It's making me laugh. It's too comical. Stop it, please. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Falcon, Dead But Alive, Southern England, episode number three. Let's get on with our journey over here. We are going to skip over to day 14 because we're done over here in day 13. Last episode, we actually got part. Oh, sweet. Two common team members have um, recovered, meaning we have a few more action points, hopefully. Thankfully, that's good. Um, last episode, we actually got part one of our fence up and running now, so we need three more still. We're actually kind of close in supplies, but we're still like 10 away, I want to say, for part two of our fence over here. Remember, remember it takes up four different parts, so right now we're one quarter of the way done over here. Uh, Renate, or Renite, I still can't say your name, but I'm going to call you Sweet Grandma because that's what you remind me of. Hey there, I was hoping to have a quick chat about something. Yeah, what's, what's on your mind? Sure. What do you have to say? I might not be as young or spry as I used to be, but I want you to know that I can pull my own weight around here, you know? Yeah. Well, what's up? I can protect myself. I may not look like it, but I'm a better with a gun than you think. You're always going out there without me. Is it to protect me? I can protect myself, love. Just give me a chance. Okay, let's support her. Great. Maybe next time you can take me with you? Then, if you think you can keep up with me, that is. Oh, <laughs> oh, she gave me a wig too. Okay, Grandma. Point taken. I should not put you aside because you're old. That would be ageism, right? So, um, yes. I don't want to be like Steve, who apparently hates Eric because he's black. Steve's an asshole. Anyway, um, 23 action points. We are kind of running a bit low on food, but that's happening because we have more people to feed now, obviously. So what I'm considering we do is um, our fuel's at 11, 20 supplies. We do need a few more supplies to get um, fence number two up as well. Let's go out here to the camp, or leave the camp anyway. And let's see what's available to us here. Uh, we have some food, which is something we kind of do need. Bullets wouldn't be too bad as well. Fuel is always amazing, but obviously this red can over here, I kind of want to avoid that for now. There's a yellow one down here too. That would walk up to 10 AP, though, huh? I'm going to say we come over here to grab some food here first. So we'll walk over here to 6 AP. The city streets were deserted. Only stray cats and dogs and the occasional corpse could be seen. Uh-huh. A fight started. Someone called out to me and I just ducked in time to avoid certain dead. Why are you almost about to die, Avatar character? It wasn't until after the fight that we noticed how close of call it had been. Uh, we survived, thankfully. We got 10 food and 1 ammunition. I like that a lot. Good stuff. Uh, let's see here. Anybody get hurt? Any injuries? Any injuries? Uh, we're fine. Good. Uh, let's see here. Let's see. Let's see. Ammunition could be ideal, but there's food here to be had as well. I kind of want to go for this fuel, guys. So let's go over here and walk. We're going to have a fight here. We noticed several corpses on the side of the road amongst the abandoned cars and broken down barricades. The ransacking going on throughout the region had not left the supermarket unharmed. The place had been clearly abandoned for some time. And there were zombies in here. The zombies had no interest in the guns and the soldiers they killed. But we're happy to take them for ourselves. Good. So we got two bullets and we got four fuel as well. And let's see. Nothing really bad happened to us, right? No, I don't think it did. All right, good. So we got a bit of uh, fuel, which is fine. And some bullets. Let's see. We could add some more people to our group here. But considering how low our food's getting right now, maybe it's not the best idea. Plus, we would have to drive out here, and I don't want to use up any fuel. So, no, we'll say no to that one. We have 7 AP left over. We cannot walk over here. We could probably walk. Nope. You know what? Let's walk over to the yellow one. We noticed several corpses on the side of the road amongst the abandoned cars and broken down barricades. We found seven food, one ammunition, two fuel, and three materials. Excellent. Alrighty. Uh, now we're done. Let's go ahead back to the old camperoo over here. Oh. Story time. Hey, right, go away, materials. Meanwhile... Huh, who the hell is this guy? Um... You and your men will be brought to justice for what you've done. And who do you think will do that? You? Or maybe the sorry lad here? Ted points to one of the other soldiers, who has been badly beaten. I don't think so. You and your men should have surrendered. Because of you... Five of my men are dead, and ten more are wounded. Which out here means pretty much the same thing. You attacked us. You attacked an outpost of the British Army. British Army, my ass. Most of you guys had been running instead of fighting since the disease broke out. We're under orders to evacuate all civilians in the area and set up the secure perimeter. Under orders? Whose orders? 
There is no government anymore. There is no society. There is nothing left of the country we once knew. But I'm not the one who to hold a grudge. I'll give you your men one last chance. Join my command. I will do my duty. I will not rest until everyone is safe and order is restored. I will die before I desert my post. Well, I don't know about the first part, but I can sure as hell help you with the last one. The leader of the bandits violently hits the officer several times until he slumps over unconscious. That's it, boss. We rounded up everyone. Good. Anything to report? Just the usual crowd, but one claims to be the daughter of a British officer. Bring her to me. Yeah, boss. I get the feeling that might be our daughter. Did, that, did she just jump as well? What the hell was that all about? <laughs> okay, anyway, I get... She is jumping! I guess they're pulling her up and down. Let go of me! So, who do we have here? My name is Emily. Yep, that's my daughter. My name is Emily, and I demand to be released at once. Oh, making demands, are you? Yes, I am. One of my parents is, well, was a British officer and will kick your ass if you don't let me go right now. Can you please stop jumping? It's making me laugh. It's too comical. Stop it, please. An officer. I've had enough officers for one day. See this guy on the ground? That's what I do with officers. Oh my god. That's better. You know, I see it as a way for my duty to bring humiliation to the people. <laughs> you will come to see that, I promise you. Keep her separated from the others. For now. What about the others? Able-bodied men who want to join us may do so. Do as you please with the others. Alrighty. Well... Apparently our daughter is in the hands of some unsavory people, I would probably say. Alrighty, so we're basically done here. We have no action points. Let's go ahead and skip over to day 15 as well. Caroline would like to talk to us. Let's go ahead and do so. Man, I'm starving. It's been too long since we've had a decent meal now. I think I'd kill a man for a steak. Caroline is smiling. Yeah, she's probably not being too um joking about that. She probably would. Well, maybe not a man, but a Zed or two. How can you eat steak if you grew up on a farm? Uh, you have to fight me for it. Yeah, you have to fight me for it, indeed. Caroline is laughing. Oh, really now? Well, no offense, but I think I could take you. Especially if steak is on the line. Tell you what, I'll save you the pummeling and just share it with you. Ah, we're making some moves over here for Caroline, let me tell you. What about you? Any food you've been missing? I'd settle for anything that isn't out of a can. As long as it's zed free, I'll be happy eating anything. Yeah, sure, we'll go with the last one. Caroline is laughing. They're worse than taste than... T they're worse than telesales, aren't they? Is that... Is that a British talk for, um, telemarketers? I believe it is. I do believe it is. I know British terminology on occasion. At least I can decipher it enough. You sit down for a nice meal of beans and biscuits, and you can guarantee a Zed or two will show up to ruin things for you. You know what? That actually sounds pretty good. Beans and biscuits. I'm a big fan of beans and biscuits, so... I never had beans and biscuits together, though. That's a good idea. Thank you, Caroline. That might be dinner for tonight. Uh, Alright, you know what? Next time I find some food on a raid, I'll get some aside and we can have a nice little dinner together. What do you say? Ah, oh, <laughs> A date, exactly! Yeah, Caroline, I'm down. A date? Cheeky. I didn't say anything about a date. What the hell, you know? What the hell, you show up in your Sunday best and we'll call it a date. Ah, uh -huh. You know, I tend to be a hit with the ladies sometimes. Caroline is no exception to that rule. <laughs> ah, anyway. Uh, 23 action points. We have 23 supplies as well. Let's see about... Uh, let's go out and about here really quick. Oh, oh, a lot of green areas. Oh, fuel. Yes. Jump over here. Let's walk over here, as a matter of fact. Today we went out to, uh, outside to investigate an area in the countryside, far away from the hordes roaming the city. 11 food, 2 ammunition, and 3 fuel. Excellent. Very good stuff. Only 4 AP as well. That's an important part about it. Let's see about... um bunch of food around us. We might as well take advantage of that now. We'll walk over here. And let's see. Zombies emerged. After the zombie fight, we got seven food and two ammunition as well. Not too bad. Not too bad. Let's make a walk over here. Six AP. We heard rumors of a small farmstead nearby. Eleven food, two ammunition, and one fuel. Okay. Furthermore, a black grand piano liberated its wood and wire. At this point, we simply needed the wood. <laughs> yeah, we did. We got four extra materials, though. Excellent. 
We have 9 AP left over. Can we walk over here? We could drive over here and have enough left over for another action back in the camp. So you know what? I'm thinking we go for it. Let's go for it. We noticed several corpses on the side of the road. Uh, let's see here. There was uh, a fight, obviously. The zombies don't feel loss or grief. We can't afford to either. Does that mean somebody got hurt? I hope not. 15 food and 1 ammunition will be acquired from this one. Alrighty, we have 5 left over. 69 food! <laughs> of course, it always happens. But that's a really good ample amount of food over here. 28 bullets, 17 fuel, and 27 supplies. I am really liking our supplies right now. Let's go back to the camp. And with 5 left over, I think what we're going to do is actually go out and find some supplies if we can. And use up the fuel in the process. That's okay. So we'll come over here, and uh, next we want chopping wood. Absolutely. We're up to 33, meaning we could actually set up fence number 2 now. Caroline has been wounded. One survivor has been wounded, yeah? That was a uh, pretty ugly fight that we just took out right there. I, I don't think we'll probably have enough to build that fence after all, because because people are wounded, we might not have enough action points tomorrow. I guess we'll give it a try here. No, we do. We absolutely do. And Caroline recovered already, too. And two other common team members have also recovered. Excellent. Let's come over here and set up fence number two. Alrighty, good. Anybody um, have anything to talk to me about, out of curiosity? Eric has something chatting to do, so we will talk to Eric over here really quickly. The world is ending. The dead are up and walking around. And I yet still somehow find that racist asshole that thinks I know, I need to know what his dumb fucking opinion of me is. Guess some people won't let a little apocalypse get in the way of their ignorance. Lucky me. Okay. He just needed to vent a little bit. But he's fine. You know, as long as he, as he vents, he should be fine. Speaking of which, all of our PIPs look to be fine. Fit for duty 5 and 2 people are either wounded or ill. That's not too bad. Alright, so let's go ahead and skip over to day 17 now. One common team member has been recovered as well. So only one should be um, hurt now. So we have two parts of our fence up and running, right? 50% done. Excellent. Alright, so that's looking pretty good. Uh, let's see, we have a bunch of food still. Bunch of fuel as well. We need more supplies, obviously, so let's go back out and leave camp. Supplies, perfect. Really nearby. Let's just walk over here if we can. We got 10 food, 1 ammunition, and 7 materials. That's a really good haul. Let's come over here. More supplies as well. We'll walk it over here too. And 1 ammunition, 5 fuel, and 2 materials. Perfect. 13 AP left over. These are red. We might want to avoid those. This is yellow, which isn't too bad. And more fuel down here. You know what? Fuel could be pretty useful. Let's go ahead and walk it down to here. And we got a fight. But we got 12 food, 1 ammunition, and 1 fuel out of it. I was really coming down there for the fuel, which we really got one of, but you know, whatever. Um, 5 AP left over. Let's get on back out of here. Oh. Yeah, but an event of some kind here. One survivor was killed! Oh no! That was probably one of a really bad fight. Quickly, come here! I think there's something... There's going to be some trouble. What's up? It's Steve and Eric! Hurry! Oh, big surprise. Say that again, and I'll break every bone in your body, starting with your chicken legs. Wow, the ape can talk. Oh, good God. That's it. <laughs> so, I like how I'm going to be like, these guys over here going at it, like just verbally despairing each other. I'm going to be like, hey, what's happening here, guys? <laughs> just very adamant about it. I could stay silent, I could let them go at it. Let's see about trying to step in, I suppose. I'm going to break your skull, you racist pig. Be careful, he's got a gun. Oh, sh sh snap. That's right. Say your last words, you bastard. Renee looks at you. Don't just stand there and do something. What do you want to do? He's holding a gun. Hey, you want me to get in front over here and block the bullet with my body? I don't want to die too, Renee. I have a daughter to find. Uh, let's go ahead and t stop Steve, I guess. Hopefully not our body. While you disarm Steve, Eric sits, hits Steve several times. Steve drops to the ground unconscious. Steve is wounded. Good night, asshole. Better get yourself a new face. Steve hates me. Eric really liked that. <laughs> do you do you like the fact that Steve hates me now, Eric? Uh, he would like to talk to me. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's got so, a few words to say to me. I'm <laughs> Oh, good God. Eric just busted this guy's face. Can't even talk. Uh, let's see. What happened here is your fault. Listen, I am sorry or stay silent. Look, I'm sorry that he beat you up, okay? I was trying to disarm you, really. He's drunk. Do this again and I will kill you. It will heal most of it. 
do we just try to put him in line now? Or is this going to further cause him to rebel against me? Like, I feel like you kind of just have to drop the hammer, you know? Where it's kind of like, look, we can't have this shit happening again. If you do it again, I will personally be the one to kill you. Not that he was trying to kill me, but, you know, he might. He might want to do it. Let's go for that one. I remember. <laughs> okay, nice talking to you, Steve. Uh, five action points left over. Let's gather a bit more supplies here if we can. Yep. Up to 18. I like that a lot. Let's go ahead and skip over to day 18 now. Renat would like to talk to you. Hello there. Hi, Renat, or hi, sweet grandma, as I like to call you. I was hoping to bend your ear for a moment about the cooking situation here. Right now, we're cooking our meals on the fire, and it's, well, just terrible, to be honest. Lukewarm canned vegetables or charred meat. I don't know which is doing worse things to my stomach. I would like to put some of our time and materials into building a real camp kitchen. It would allow us to make better meals, or at the very least, I do look rather dashing in a chef's, in a chef's hat. Well, what do you need? Some work and material. I know supplies are scarce, but think how much better it would be to great have some real food once in a while. So this new um, thing that we just added, it was going to require 30 AP and 20 materials, and something else which you just skipped. Um, sure. Okay, let's do it. We don't have everything we need, but I'll check back again when we do. Can I build that at my own leisure, though, or do we have to wait for you to come back again? Because I normally don't have too many supplies over here, Grandma. I, I'm usually using them up a lot. Uh, no, it seems like we might have to wait for her after all. That's unfortunate. Okay, so we might want to have a bit of supplies gathered up so that we could probably get this little kitchen camp set up over here. Not too bad. So let's see, we have 21 action points. We have a lot of food. I want to get some more supplies so we could build fence number three here. Oh, we have, uh, this is over here story related. These are uh, exclamation marks. These are actually, like, to progress the actual story, you have to do check them out eventually. Uh, for now, though, I really want to get that fence up and running, so we'll skip it for now. We'll come over here and grab some food. We'll walk over here. 16 food and 1 ammunition. Pretty, pretty good. Um, some bullets down here and some more food down here. I want supplies, though, so we'll walk over here to 10. Uh, let's see. Food 7, 2 bullets, and 3 materials only. Mm, Could have been better. 7 action points left over, huh? Well then. Mm, I say we just use them up back in the camp for a bit more supplies, too. So, back to the old camperoo. And gather up some supplies. It's gonna cost us some fuel, but we're up to 19 anyway, so it's not too bad. There you go. Lose 5 AP and get some more supplies. We're really close to building fence number 3, too. And with 2 AP left over, we could basically go ahead and skip to the next day. Caroline wants to talk to me. Steve has now recovered. Let's find out how our people are doing. 5 fit for duty, only 1 wounded or ill. And my VIP seem to be in good condition. Excellent. Caroline, what do you have to tell me about? Hey, I wanted to talk to you. Sure. We urgently need a real doctor around here. I agree. A doctor would be very nice. You know, I grew up on a farm around here. He always came and treated our animals. I skipped something by mistake again. Very sensitive, this clicking thing. He's not a real doctor. I know. But he might not be the he might be the closest thing to a doctor we can get around here. You know what? For some reason, isn't that really happened too often? Like in um, most uh, apocalyptic scenarios or just disaster movies or media that you notice, you never you either have a doctor. Or you don't have a doctor, but you have a vet. <laughs> it's always like a vet. Like, it's always like, well, he's kind of a doctor. He did treat animals. So it's just really comical in that sense that there's always, like, either legitimately a doctor or someone who could be a doctor, or at least kind of close to it. And here we have a vet, which is relatively cliche. But, you know, it's a, it's a cliche in pop culture when it comes to apocalyptic disaster movies that I do enjoy anyway. It does make sense. I mean... Yeah, I guess you could treat humans as well, I mean, yeah. Let's see. It's worth checking out? Sure. A new location has been marked on our map. Excellent. We might want to go check that out now. I think a doctor having a doctor here early or soon could be pretty ideal. So let's go out here and... Ah. Uh, she said by Salisbury, right? So this right here might be it. Let's see. Yep, this is a bad one. Salisbury's a nice town and I have many fond memories of staying here in a townhouse. Uh, but Clever, Mickey Can, Rod, Raj Podge, Dirk, Barker, and a few other transient lodgers. I remember one damp day when Raj, Dirk, and I decided to walk to the New Forest, which is about 10 miles to the southwest. I expect that there are a few lumbering souls walking around this part of the city now, lumbering dead, or the semi-dead, those poor wretches that are infected with this terrible virus. These destined who succumb to its burning chemical fury. Caroline thinks there might be a vet living here. We could use his help. Uh, let's go ahead and walk over here. 
Uh, today we went to find the vet that Carolyn talked about. We went to his house, Carolyn and I went inside while the others kept watch. Downstairs it looked empty. Luckily it wasn't looted yet. One of the good things about living in the countryside is that there are fewer people. We found some supplies in the kitchen. There was a kid's giant spider toy on the floor under the couch. Why is there spiders all over this game? I hate spiders. Caroline got a major shock when she went to look under the couch for hidden stuff. Yeah, I don't blame her. I would have too. I would have probably like literally died right there. I would have just my heart would have just stopped functioning. I would have just dropped dead. Screw zombies. Big spiders. Scarier. Anyway, I never seen her that white. But what we found on the top floor wasn't all that funny. We went into the bathroom before we checked the bedroom. There were still some medications in the bathroom racks. I was going through the racks when I heard Caroline crying from the bedroom. I jumped through the door ready to, for anything, but there were no zombies. Just the bed. Lying in the bed beside his wife. Both were dead. Still tightly clasping each other. In their joined hands they had a picture of their children. On the bedside table there were two empty syringes. Looks like they chose to kill themselves rather than to face the horror. On the floor besides them was the vet's medicine bag, filled with stuff we could really use. I felt bad about taking it, but it won't help its previous owner anymore. It at least had made it worth the visit. You found some medical supplies which will help ill or wounded people in your group recover faster. Alrighty, well... Uh, no vet! A vet decided to take his own life, but you know... At least um, we got some medical supplies and we'll be able to heal faster now, which is actually pretty ideal. We have a bunch of food, we have 13 AP left over, this is going to be the story related mission for now. I'm thinking supplies, but unfortunately that's red, I'm not sure if I want to do that one. We might want to drive out here. Oh, we could walk over there too. Let's walk over here instead. Uh, let's see, we got 5 food, 2 ammunition, and 8 materials. Excellent! That means tomorrow we get fence number 3 up and running too. Uh, Caroline wants to talk. What do you have to say? What we found today in the vet's house, I can't forget it. Let's calm her down. It's just, I'm wondering what happened to my parents. I tried to get back to the farm, you know? But there were so many zombies around that I simply couldn't. I... Put an arm around her. Just hold me for a moment, will you? Yeah. Oh, the, um, dread of the entire situation is finally getting to Caroline, which, you know, is kind of weird because she kind of really puts up a strong facade. But there you go. Uh, let's see here. Um, I guess we skip over to the next day unless somebody has something else to talk to me about. No, that's about it. So tomorrow, or right now anyway, we'll talk to Caroline soon. Let's go ahead and get um, defenses up and running. So, number three fence. Yes. Boom. Alrighty. No action points left over for today, but that's okay. We need to talk to Caroline right now. I've asked around amongst the survivors who recently joined us, and they told me that there are rumors of a doctor in Winchester. I think we should check it out. Sagree. So About that thing yesterday? Don't too mu don't put too much thought into it. I had a rough day. A new location is marked on your map. Ah. Women, right? <laughs> Who understands them? I don't. But that's the course, because I don't understand I don't even understand myself really, so I can't really even say women, huh? Anyway. Uh, let's see, I'm sure women feel the same way about guys, too. Like, guys! Ah, who understands? I, of course, when women do say that, they probably don't sound that way. Unless they've been, like, an abusive smoker for all their life, and they really sound like this, because then that'd be kind of weird. Anyway, day 20, we are going to skip over to day 21, because we have nothing left over. Unless, um, you guys want to chat with me about something. No, you're fine. Skip over. Alrighty, day 23. Or, I mean, action points 23, day 21. Uh, again, we need 30 supplies for our fence to be done, which we're almost there. We're actually quite close to it. Let's come out here, and hopefully supplies are in the menu. Not particularly... Not that one, anyway. We could walk over to here with 10 AP. Let's do that one instead. 13 food, 2 ammunition, and only 3 materials. Not as much as I was hoping for. Uh, let's see. Food I think we're fine with. Fuel would be pretty good, which is actually an easy one to grab. So we'll come up here. Uh, there was a fight of some kind, but right now we got 2 food, 2 ammunition, and only 2 fuel. Could have been better. And with seven left over, I think we just hold off, go back to the camp, and we will use that instead for um, supplies of materials again. So, boom. And that's about it. Steve hasn't talked to us in a while. I really hope this guy isn't over here plotting to kill me or something, because he's just been really, really quiet to keep it to himself for a minute now. Oh, there we go. Speaking of the devil, let's talk to this uh, crazy man. I think we should check out the police station in Bodemout. 
Why? I don't think we'll find any help there. It surely has got overrun, but they might have guns there and other stuff. I'll think about it. If you need to think about it, then I guess thinking was never your strongest point. What? Never mind. Uh, day 23, we're up to 14 supplies. We're getting close to it now. Let's see about these areas that they talked about, though. So, over here would be the police station, and over here is where the possible doctor's at. Let's go ahead for the doctor first, just in case we get injured. So, there'll be a 12 AP walk, or we could drive up there for 6 fuel. Uh, no, let's just do the walk instead. We went to investigate rumors of a doctor still practicing, or at least living in Winchester, using the directions we've been giving. We found a house on the outskirts of the town. As we drew closer, a gunshot passed within an inch of my ear. I could have been killed. Are you the one who shot me, you, you jerk? Stop. Now one more step. What do you do? Uh, we're friends, don't shoot. Please. I'll be the judge of that. What are you doing here? We've been looking for you. Why would you do that? We're a big group. We got food and shelter. Oh, God. Stop skipping lines, game. Uh, we've heard you're a doctor. Is this true? I once was, but I retired from the NHS years ago. We've heard you've helped people. I do what I can, but I'm out of medical supplies. I cannot do much without some more. We have medical supplies, actually. Really? Well, I don't know you. How can I know that I can trust you? Uh, we could threaten him, yeah. I'm sure that's going to convince him to join us. He's going to say, you know what, after threatening me so much and, um, you know, impairing physical harm, or at least, you know, giving me the idea you're going to actually physically harm me, you know what, I figure I can trust you after all. Let's see if we can just try to convince him without threatening over here. Steve, don't even dare come into this picture, my friend. You try your best to convince him. Forget it. Now leave me alone. Oh, come on, I guess I should have threatened him after all. Maybe we should come back later. He might change his mind. Oh, come on. What do you mean later? When is later? When is a good time for later for him? There's a zombie apocalypse out here. There's no time for later, game. Alrighty. Uh, let's see. With 11 points, we could go check out that police station. Yes. Alright, let's go to the police station then. Today, we went to investigate the central police station and Burnmouth. When the disease spread and attacks in the street became more common, this area was heavily fortified by the police and military. Caroline scratched herself on some barbed wire and almost freaked out thinking she might have been infected herself. But either the barbed wire was clean or dried blood is not infectious. Once we'd crossed into the fortifications, we decided to build a makeshift ladder from the material lying around and break into one of the windows on the second floor. We did not expect the police station to still be manned. We were wrong. We literally met Tom and Lucy at gunpoint. Get loose AP. Stop! Police! Oh shit. Hey, you don't look like you're infected. Uh, we're not. Very well. I think under the circumstances, breaking into a police station won't end up in a trip to the cells. Oh, thanks a lot, Lucy, for, um, you know, still upholding the law. Come with us, we've got supplies. I'm not alone. Wait, do you have antibiotics? A doctor, maybe? We rushed back to Winchester with the car we made the distance in two hours, and it only took that long because we had to detour around some block streets. Gerald was at home and opened the door. Where else would he be? You again! I guess this is how we get Gerald to join. Someone needs your help. Gunshot wound. Where? Police station in Burnmount. It's an officer. We've got a car. Alright, I'm coming. It was getting lonely here anyway. Oh, now you're willing to join? Two hours later. I like how trustful he is too. Like, you know, he didn't trust us to begin with. But now we come back and we're like, hey, somebody's hurt. He's like, oh, let's go, let's go, let's go. It's like, what changed your mind so fast? I'm a doctor. What's the problem? My colleague has a gunshot wound. Come with me, I'll take you to him. You follow Lucy to a room further down, a wounded officer is lying on a table. Gerard quickly and efficiently examines his new patient. Okay, Tom, this might hurt. I told you. You're lucky the wound is not infected and the bullet went right through the leg. You were lucky it didn't hit any of the bones or arteries. I'll need a place to probably clean and stitch the wound. You will be okay. Lucy, will you and Tom join us? I guess so. We decided to hold out here as long as we could, but we're almost out of supplies. It doesn't look like there will be any relief coming anyway. What about guns? That's about the only thing we've got in surplus here. Okay, let's pack up and we get out of here. Got 10 ammunition for this. Good. Nice. Alrighty. 
So, um, did Gerald join us as well? Let's, as well, let's find out. Show camp. Uh, let's see, let's see. Oh, yeah, we got a new, uh, few new people. Excellent. Alrighty. I mean, other than the police officer, now we have a doctor as well. Pretty, pretty good. Let's wrap it up here for today, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Leave a thumbs up. Leave a like. I will catch you next time.